Hi everyone, Donna here with Wikipedia You Made Simple. And I want to talk a little bit today about uh, the biggest trend that's going on in employment and that is um, remote work and how to manage remote workers. Um, not just how to manage them, but whether you should bring them in back into the office, whether a hybrid um, work is gonna be better. Um, there's a lot of things, a lot of moving pieces that we didn't have to deal with before. So before I really get started on this, um, if you like the show, please like, share, and subscribe. We are on Spotify, um, Google Podcasts. We're on YouTube. We're on Amazon. Um, I just set all of these feeds up. Um, so there's a lot um a lot of places you can find this podcast. If you enjoy this, please like, share, and subscribe. My goal here is to help business owners make good decisions for their business. And that is really what accounting is all about. But today we're going to talk about remote work. And the reason I want to talk about that is I've been working remotely for over 20 years now. Um, I've been working remotely really since 90, no, not quite 97, 99. Um, certainly by 2000, I was working from home full-time. Um, by 2003, I was really seeking a lot of ways of working from home, and that was when it was considered new. Now, um, I grew up in a home where my parents owned their own business, so the idea of owning my own business is not new to me. Um, my parents owned a pest control business in Seattle, and mom ran the office, and dad would go out and do the calls. And uh, I look at this today where we have internet and we have instant messaging and text messaging and cell phones. And I go, I do not know how mom and dad did that before, you know, cause Seattle was a crowded city then and it's even more crowded today. And so I do not know how they did that in a day before cell phones, but they did and they did a great job. Um, but that's how I grew up. I. I came home from grade school and my mom was home. She wasn't always, you know, available. You know, she was busy. Um, she had a lot of kids. Um, and then she, you know, the, the business was run from a, literally a spare bedroom in the house um, so that she could be home. Her goal was to be home with her kids, but still have a, a job, a career, a way of earning money. Um, and she went from that to when we moved to Kentucky, she became a school bus driver. So again, so she could be home with kids during the day. And then she was only out when she was transporting kids anyway. Um, so it worked really well for her. Um, I could not be a school bus driver. Kudos to my mom and my sister, Debbie, that they're able to do that. Um, it's not something that I could do. I, uh, uh, I remember, however, First of all, watching my parents start and grow this business, again, from a basement, you know, from one of the bedrooms. Um, we had a second phone line, because again, this was pre-internet days. Nobody had a second phone line, except unless you were really rich and you had an extra line for your kids. Um, but we had a second line that was the business line, had its own phone number, had its own phone. We weren't allowed to touch it or use that phone for anything. Mom was the queen of that phone. And we had a an answering machine, which was is probably about the size of my desk. <laughs> it was like three feet, two feet wide and three feet deep. And I was just three feet wide and two feet deep, I guess. And um, we weren't allowed to touch that either because it was that would be on when um, this, for those of you who are young and have never seen an answering machine, that's what we had before voicemail. That was the precursor to voicemail. Um, but then it had two, two tape decks and uh, one was the outgoing message and the other one was the incoming messages. And these were full size tape decks because this was in the, the 70s. Um, so I grew up with this idea that mothers could work from home because my mom did. And then I remember walking into a radio shack and seeing a modem. And this was about the time War Games came out, the movie War Games. Um, and it was, you know, the old fashioned phones that were had the round microphone and speakers. Um, 
this modem had round spots on the top for you to put your handset to your phone on it. Again, we don't have those kind of phones anymore. Um, but I remember looking at this and thinking, this is the future. We will be able to work out of our own homes and send the work in to corporate headquarters. I, you know, and I was all of 10 years old when I saw that. Um, that uh, fueled my desire to become a computer scientist. I really wanted to study computers. Uh, again, this is pre-Microsoft, pre-internet, pre-everything, um, when personal computers were still several thousand dollars a piece. You were very rich if you had one in your home. Um, and I started studying computer science in 1985. I'm really dating myself in um, at Brigham Young University. And even then, I mean, the, the Macintosh had come out. And, uh, but, you know, you still saved everything on a disk. You had to actually transport your files. You couldn't put it, the cloud didn't exist. Um, you couldn't just save everything on the internet. So you would have a floppy drive and the, the, they'd gone from the five and a quarter inch ones to the three and a half inch ones. Um, and you'd have to carry those around. Um, and then if you wanted mainframe time, okay, you had to go to the computer building, which was full filled with a mainframe. Um, today, of course, um, technology has caught up, but management hasn't. Uh, the technology to work from home has been there since the 70s and 80s, honestly. Um, the prices have come down. So by the 90s, and certainly by the 2000s, um, anyone that wanted to work from home, you know, I could afford a, a laptop by 2007. Uh, I had a desktop from home in 2099, you know, in 1999 and 2000. I had, I had a desktop computer and I was able to hook up to the internet. So certainly by the late 90s, uh, anyone that wanted to work from home was able to work from home. Um, they just, but the management wasn't there. The management skills weren't there. So I really want to talk about that. That's where we are today. The, the technology has matured. Um, everybody has broadband. Everybody. The, the people in the middle of the desert in darkest Africa have access to the internet. Um, you know, people who are living in the middle of the Gobi Desert, they have access to the, the internet. Um, you know, they, they may not have a car, but they have a cell phone that can access the internet. So there's really no reason anymore that I can see, unless you are customer facing, I, I will put that caveat in there. There are certain jobs that you just can't phone in. Um, pilots, doctors, um, grocery store checkers and stalkers. Um, there, there are things where you actually have to go to your place of work to do them. Because one, either they're customer facing, um, such as doctors. Doctors are very customer facing. They just happen to call their customers patients. Um, lawyers can do most of their work from home unless they you don't need to go into the office to use their law library. Um, and even then, law libraries are available online. <laughs> um, so they can they can file uh, they can file motions they can file things with the court from their home office and really the only reason to have an office office is to meet with clients um, same thing for tax preparation the biggest reason to have an office for tax preparation is if you want to meet with your clients face to face um, I actually don't do that I choose to do everything absolutely remotely we may get an office later. But I have worked remotely for 20 some odd years. And I also allow my, um, my staff to work from home. They are employees. They are, uh, put this on, do not disturb. Uh, they are employees. They are, you know, with everything that goes along with that. But I don't require them to be in the office. And I do that because I found that I was more productive myself working from home. And if you're extroverted, it might be absolute hell for you. 
but if you're introverted like I am, believe it or not, I'm actually fairly introverted. Um, I like to talk to people one on one. And so it was always difficult for me to work in an office because I would have to do things like put headphones in and tune out all the distractions. Um, talked to in one of my more recent videos about finding out that I had ADHD at the age of 55. And uh, I've really had to, I, I've just been like, oh my gosh, that explains so much. Um, not that I like the label, but I was like, that explains a lot about how my brain works. And um, so when I would, when I worked in an office and I had people, we worked in a bullpen. This was when I worked for a hospital um, and I was in patient accounting. And so I would work in a big bullpen with 20 other women, maybe 25 other women. And of course there's a lot of gossip going on and I was very focused on my work. So I would actually bring in, again, I'm dating myself, a Walkman and put my headphones in and um, my colleagues would then have to tap me on the shoulder to say it was time to go on break. Uh, and that's really how I like to work. Um, I really like it when I'm so focused and, and dialed into what I'm doing that I have to be interrupted to take my required breaks. Um, but I, everyone else seemed to work just fine, but I would get so distracted that I would get to the end of the day and say, I didn't get anything done. Um, but when I worked from home, even though, you know, I had little children for most of that time, um, I was, you know, I was able to teach them from a very early age, you know, when to come interrupt me, when, you know, how to behave. Um, I was fortunate that they were fairly quiet kids, um, just by nature. <laughs> um, so I was able to work from home and be there for my kids and still be able to not have the distractions of having 25 other people around me, all trying to get my attention at once. For me, that becomes very overwhelming. And I'm working on dealing with that. Um, kind of as a side note, by the way, I really hate it when CEOs and highly successful entrepreneurs talk like they have known how to do this their whole lives and it's just so easy and you just you just do the thing and I'm you know if I'm neurodivergent which evidently I am I don't you know there's no real firm test on that but if I'm neurodivergent if I have a different way of approaching things for example I'm not an early morning person at all I would rather go to bed at five in the morning than get up at five in the morning. Um, and I've never been a lark, but all the CEOs say, oh yeah, you have to get up at five. And I go, do I know? <laughs> I have a list of things I have to do for the day. As long as I get to the end of the day and those things are done, it doesn't matter if I end my day at two in the morning or if I end my day at eight in the evening. Um, I have my, my power list that I try to work through and that's it. Um, and today that list is actually quite short. I have like two things I have to do, but they're big projects. Um, so yeah, there's just a side note. I really hate it that see, when CEOs are like, no, oh, the only way to succeed is to work from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. And I'm like, some of us have obligations that and responsibilities that overlap those times and especially the women um we have to learn how to really be efficient with our time because we don't have as much time and that is not out of laziness <laughs> it's because uh, especially when when my kids were little i was the one that took them to the doctor i was the one that that made sure that they were getting their schoolwork done i happened to homeschool them the two younger ones um I was the one that was there to support my older daughter. I was the one that, you know, I was like, I have all these other things I have to do. And if you can find me a male CEO who can do everything in a day or a week or a lifetime that I have done, I'll be impressed. <laughs> or a uh, another woman with children who's done everything that I've done. Um, I've noticed that the really highly successful women that achieve what the world wants them to achieve are childless. I have five kids, um, which is not a dig on them. It's just simply when you don't have kids, 
you can focus on your work. And when you do have kids, especially if you're the mother, you have to focus on your kids because you have this little bitty tiny window of time, believe it or not, it's a teeny, teeny, tiny window when they're going to depend on you and then they're going to grow up. And so the, the key is to love and appreciate them while they're little, because before you know it, they're going to be uh, leaving the nest. And I laugh and say the days were so long and the years were so short. Um, anyway, back to the remote work thing. <laughs> um, welcome to my ADHD. Um, I wanted to be home with my kids. I also knew that I wanted a career. I have not never been happy being full-time, stay at home, nothing else to do because I really like being busy. And so um, even when I lived in Germany, when I couldn't work because I wasn't, I didn't have permission from the German government, um, we would go do things. We were always on the run. I would get up and get the kids dressed and get in the car and go, go somewhere. Um, so we went to, we went to Dachau and we, we toured a lot of Southern Germany. Um, and, you know, that was awesome and great. It was a wonderful experience for myself and my kids. Um, but I would, I would really try never to be home. Um, just because it was, if I was home, you know, I had such, such limited things I could do. German TV does not air the way American TV does. Um, they have a, a different system. So my TV didn't work unless it was hooked up to the VCR. Um, we could watch movies that we had recorded or, or that we had sent over from the States, um, but we couldn't just watch over the air TV because our, our TV was, uh, was an American TV and we didn't have a German TV. So it, they just didn't speak the same language, literally. Um, and, but I got really bored just being at home with, with little kids and that's just my personality. Uh, again, not bashing anyone that's made a different decisions because I really believe most people make the best decisions for themselves. Um, or at least, they, at least they're trying to, even if they're not the decisions I would make. Um, so I learned pretty early that I'm happier when I have a job. I'm happier when I have things I have to do, when I have a reason to get up in the morning, I have a reason to put my makeup on, I have a reason to get dressed. Um, and I fall into, into depression pretty quickly if I don't have those reasons. So I've always just really liked to work, but I didn't want to leave my kids. Um, when I worked for the hospital, I would take my youngest to daycare. My two older ones were in school and I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like being separated from my kids that much. This is just how I'm wired. Um, I liked when I was able to work from home, I was there. I wasn't in their faces, but I was there. They could come and get me. They could come and talk to me. They didn't have to worry about interrupting me at work, so to speak. Um, so I was, when I started working from home and realized just that it gave me the best of both worlds, I was delighted. And I was perfectly happy to start working early in the morning and take breaks throughout the day and then end working at like 10 o'clock at night. When I would go to bed, I just loved it. I loved work and I loved to bring value to people. And I really loved being able to have that flexibility where if I needed to take a child to the doctor, I could do it. <laughs> I could do it. I didn't have to, you know, I would, I was, I've been my own boss for years, so I didn't have to ask anyone's permission. I would just take my phone and go to the doctor. And uh, today, I of course, I would ask one of my staff to cover the phones, please. I'm going to be unavailable. Um, and, it's, and I treat them the same way I would want to be treated myself. That's really the key. I've noticed that Elon Musk and uh, is wanting all of his people to be in the office minimum of 40 hours a week. Um, I've also noticed that uh, the East Coast Wall Street firms, Goldman Sachs, um, JP Morgan Chase, um, all of the East Coast banking, banking and finance firms 
are really pushing to have their people back in the office. Their reasoning for that is that if you are a junior member of the team, if you're young and starting your career, you need to be with someone who's older and more mature and knows the ropes and can teach you. And you could that, and they seem to think this can only happen in the office because out of sight, out of mind. Um, and I really think that's their management style is out of sight, out of mind. Now, mine is fairly what they call laissez-faire. I am hands off. Um, I just go through and I check and just make sure that the clients have been worked on and that they look right. Um, I hire people who are qualified, who are have some experience. They may not have all of the experience that I might want, but a lot of these are starting their careers. Um, and then I make, my, make, a, make myself available. The other thing that I do is I have a weekly staff meeting and it's mandatory. Uh, that is the only thing <laughs> that I have done that is mandatory. You will be at this meeting or you will have to tell me why you weren't there. We, I mean, ahead of time. And if you just miss it just because you missed it, we will have to have a very intense conversation. That is the one thing that I have that's mandatory. The reason is because that gives me a chance to talk to every single employee and ask them, where are you at with your clients? Do you have any clients that you have problems with? Or do you have any clients that you didn't work on last week? And if so, why? What can we do? And this is the difference. What can we do to support you as you are trying to uh, make sure all the clients are caught up, that you're trying to make sure all the clients are taken care of? If you're having problems with communication with the client, what can I do to support you? How can I help you get in touch with this person? Um, sometimes hearing from the boss instead of just a staff member is sufficient. Uh, sometimes I have to make the call and be like, dude, you're paying us. <laughs> we want to do the work. Um, please give us the information that we're asking for. Um, so I do go back and I do check their work. That is what our, our Monday morning staff meeting is for. I go back through, I check the work before the meeting. And then I make a list of the clients that I see. And it's usually just a random sample. I don't go through every single client every single week, but I take a sample and I start looking at, you know, for this staff member, her. Um, I start asking questions, basically. I start asking, what clients do you feel like you are having problems with? Um, what clients do you think, you know, what, what challenges are you seeing? And then the rest of the week, I'm available on Teams and my phone. And um, there's a couple of things I'm trying to do. One is I'm trying to find the leaders, um, the, the ones that will step up and figure things out without taking a ton of time. I'm also looking for, you know, who's understanding the reasoning behind my decisions. Um, versus who is just pushing back without, without understanding or without, they're asking the wrong questions, so to speak. Um, I'm looking for someone who steps up and shows leadership potential because that's the person that I'm going to promote to be a manager as the team grows because I want to promote internally. But I am not looking to see, did you spend 40 hours sitting in front of your computer this week. What I'm paying them for, I pay them by the hour, but what I'm paying them for is results. So if they if they say they work 40 hours a week, but I'm not seeing 40 hours a week worth of work, again, that's, yeah, I do go through them. I do double check. I do look to see. I do review the timesheets. You know, I do a lot of administrative type work to make sure that my employees are doing the work that they say that they're doing and that they are being reasonable in the time that they're spending on each client. And then I also start talking to them about the difference between value added work and just busy work. There's a world of difference. I want them to spend their time on the value added work. Busy work you can do in little gaps here and there through the day. If you're attaching receipts to QuickBooks, that's not mission critical. Uh, we have clients that like us to do that. It's not mission critical. We have all the receipts. They're in they're in our our um, filing system, our online files, OneDrive or SharePoint. We have them. 
So, um, so I will say, you know, you don't have to worry about attaching receipts. If you have 20 minutes of downtime while you're waiting for a meeting with a client, um, yeah, go ahead and spend that 20 minutes, but don't spend hours doing that because it's not a value add. Um, so that's one of the things that I do to manage them. I give them enough free reign that they can figure things out. I also give them unlimited access to me so that um, I can train them. I record all my trainings so that I can upload them and I have those trainings all set um, for just about anything that comes up. Because if I record every question that's asked of me, um, pretty soon I have a pretty solid training program. Um, and then a lot of it is I trust them to do the work. I double check it, but I also trust it. I, I don't have to see them. And I don't have to see them because I have an appointment with them every Monday. And I talk to them, each of them individually about their work. And then I talk to them individually during the week. I do not allow it to be out of sight, out of mind. I can't afford for it to be out of sight, out of mind. I don't have trillions of dollars that I'm controlling. Um, wish I did. <laughs> I don't have billions or millions of dollars that I'm controlling. Um, so I need the girls, I need my staff to step up and do the work. I need to be able to just check in with them once in a while. But I don't need to micromanage everything that they do. If I needed to do that, I would fire them all and I would just do the work myself. And that's not what I'm after here. <laughs> um, so, but most managers today, they are used to the only way that they know to manage their team is to have butts and seats and to see them face to face and to walk by their desk and see what they're working on. Um, and to make sure, you know, maybe their mouse is jiggling, make sure their mouse is jiggling. That way I know that they're at their desk. And I go, well, if they did the work and it's bringing me value, I don't really care. If, if they're doing the work and I'm getting the cash flow and my business is doing well and they're doing enough work to cover their payroll plus some, um, do I really need to have um, very invasive programs on their computers that check to see how often the mouse gets moved. No, I don't, but I do need to make sure that the relationship of trust is there. And that's where most of these uh, managers that I see really are missing out. They don't have this relationship of trust. They don't believe that their staff is going to work if they're going to work from home. They really don't believe that. So how do you create a work ethic or a work um, culture that engenders trust. Well, first it comes from the top and the top, by the way, does not necessarily mean the CEO. The CEO may be a complete jerk, but the manager with, with a few direct reports can start, to, I mean, and they may be overruled a little bit by HR. I know HR tends to get in the way. Um, pesky stuff. Um, but the manager that's working with their direct reports needs to say, basically, this is what I need, and this is the date I need it by, and I'm going to check with you. And they need to have that on their calendar because we all get busy. Um, and then they need to follow up before the due date. How are things going? What can again? What can I do to support you? Is the biggest question, the best question you can ask. You should never be leaving anybody out to dry. But as the manager, the manager should be proactively making sure that all of their staff members are, one, doing the work, doing it on time, doing it appropriately, and they should be providing training on how to work remotely um, if they don't feel like it's being done. So uh, I teach, for example, I teach a Pomodoro method. This is what I use because I can get very, very focused and then and kind of come to at five o'clock in the evening and go, oh, I haven't eaten anything. I haven't drunk anything. I haven't, I haven't moved from my spot. And I don't expect my staff to do that. Um, but the Pomodoro method has me work 25 minutes and then take a five minute break. So I'm, 
I'm taking short, frequent breaks, which gives me a chance to do things like put a load of laundry in, load the dishwasher, unload the dishwasher, sweep the floor. Yes, I have cleaners come in. It's such, such the best uh, money I have ever spent. Uh, yeah, I have people come in to clean, but I also still have to do some some chores, like keep up the keep up the dishes and keep up the the laundry and stuff like that. It, but it doesn't. It's a lot of put it in the machine and wait. And so I will put it in the machine, and then I will go come back here and work. And then at my next break, I'll put something in a different machine, and then I'll come back. You know, even bread making. I love to bake. Even bread making is a lot of put everything in and mix it up and wait for two hours. Uh, so I'm able to do a lot of, you know, people look at me and go, oh my gosh, you're able to do so much stuff. I'm like, I do these in five minute breaks throughout my day. Um, so with that said, if you're the manager, you should be teaching your staff. You should be trying to understand them, teach them how you want them to report to you and how do you respond to them? Um, how do you, you know, how do you react when they ask for help? Because if they ask for help and you go, oh, she's, she's just bugging me again, um, then that they won't ask. How do you spell your first name? Hang on just a second. So that's a lot of things, but a lot of the, the mismatch, so to speak, in, in culture is because the young people, um, the new upcoming kids that are just coming out of school, have learned they, they don't have to be in an office. Most of their work is done from home. They've also spent the last three years, uh, some of them, doing school from home. And so they're, they don't really see the need for an office if you're doing office-style work. Um, again, if you're customer facing, you do have to go into work. We all know that. But if you are able to work from home, you know, the, the kids are saying, why would I want to go into an office? And I have to agree with them. So what we do here is we have a hybrid method, um, which is basically um, employees, when they first are hired, they come in and work in the office for you know a few weeks. Um, as I teach them the workflow and the... Um, you know, how to talk to the customer, how to, you know, the, the basics of how to do this job. And uh, then they are allowed to decide if they would like to come into the office or if they would prefer to work from home. And, and inevitably, every single employee says, I really just want to work from home uh, unless I have questions. And if they know they're going to have a whole lot of questions, then they'll come in and I'll sit with them and, and go over that. Um, that does a few, quite a number of things. One, it puts them in control. The employees don't have a ton of control. Uh, that's why they're employees and not contractors. Um, and that's deliberate on my part. Um, but they have a control over where their workspace is. And I talk to them about, yes, if you leave your desk, block your screen so that nobody can come along and see what you're working on. This is confidential. Um, I teach them, yes, put the, the screen protector so that nobody walking by or have a room where you can shut the door or um, turn your computer around the other way. There's a lot of things we can do in a work from home environment that uh, allow us to protect the confidentiality of our employee, of our clients. And we do those things. And I check on those things. Um, so that's, not a problem and most people don't really look um, but it's so simple to be able to to protect any confidentiality without um, losing your ability to work from your own location um, so the employee now they under they feel like they have flexibility in their schedule so if they say you know i need to take my kids to the doctor and i won't be clocking in until 11 um I can, I can tell them, okay, you know, I understand. That's fine. Thank you for letting me know. I will ask someone else to make sure that the phones are covered from 9 to 11. Um, and of course, we all work as a team. So anyone that answers the phone can answer questions. Um, the other thing is 
it gives them it, it gives them a lot of autonomy. So they're able to make these decisions. You know, where do I want to work? How do I want my office decorated? Um, how how do I have this set up so it's comfortable for me? It's keeping my client information safe. Um, and again, it's all on the cloud, password protected. Um, we do a lot to make sure it's it's kept safe. Um, and then how do I, you know, then if if you have little kids at home and your kid wants to sit in your lap while you're working, honestly, unless you're on camera, that's really not a problem. Um, I don't know how they do it. I couldn't do it when I was, my kids were little, but if you're able to, you know, if you just need to cuddle your kids for a few minutes, it's not a problem. And I'm not going to make it a problem. So a lot of the, um, a lot of the issues I think with work, remote work and the reason it's not working for a lot of companies has very little to do with the work being done. It has a great deal of, of to do with, um, it has a great deal to do with whether or not the managers are able to manage remote workers. And most of them haven't been taught. They didn't, the ones that are my age and older uh, didn't grow up in that. They didn't, they've never worked from home. They, or they're men and they don't want to be at home. They want to be in an office where it's quiet. And women are, are you know, we have so much that we're trying to do that it's kind of restful to be for us to be at home by and large. I'm not trying to stereotype anyone. Um, so there's there's a lot of things. You've got personalities. You've got um, most accountants, by the way, are very introverted. That's why they went into accounting. Um, and most um, most salesmen are very extroverted. That's why they're in sales. They, you you choose the career that works for your personality, right? Um, my my husband is a salesman, and he is uh, very much an extrovert. He loves talking to people. He loves talking to people on the phone. He loves speaking from the stage. He loves, uh, he's never met a stranger in his life. He's met some very strange people, but they were never strangers to him. He knows how to relate to everybody. Um, I am probably ambiverted, which means I can I can be in, introverted when I need to be and extroverted when I need to be. I'm able to, I'm probably more on the extrovert side. Um, and then a lot of my staff are very introverted. They can talk to people on the phone, but they don't like to pick up the phone. Um, it's something we've been doing a lot of training on. They don't like to pick up the phone. It's the way they're wired. That's why they're good accountants, by the way. <laughs> um, so you have to you have to understand the personalities. The hybrid work method is the one that I think allows the people that are most comfortable working from home to work from home. Those that are most comfortable being in an office get to be in an office, but the managers have to be the ones to make sure that the remote workers are not overlooked, which they should have been doing in the office anyway. Um, walking around the bullpen to see if your staff is working is so inefficient, uh, believe it or not. Um, I could, and I did when I worked for the hospital, um, I would, I would get really tired, you know, cause I had so much going on in my life. And so I would literally learn to sit like this and look like I was really studying my screen. And I would have my hand on my mouse, move my mouse and I'd fall asleep. Um, didn't happen very often, but I, I, I've known from high school how to look busy when I'm not busy, <laughs> Um, I've no, I knew how to do that in high school. I knew how to do that in college. I still know how to do that. And we all do. <laughs> we all know how to appear to be busy. We all know to put the right screen up when the boss is walking by. Um, bosses, you are not fooling anyone if you are just doing the walk around and see if they're working method. But because we have our in-depth staff meeting, at least you know once a week, and then I meet with the employees separately, frequently throughout the week. Nobody gets overlooked, um, so I'm able to keep track of what's going on, and keep track of how the employees are feeling and how they're doing, and checking to see if the work is getting done on time. Um, 
And because they, they can't fool me, because I'm checking their work, um, they can't fool me. So I'm able to actually get keep a better tabs on what's going on than I really think I would if they were in an office. Because um, the old fashioned way of managing just doesn't work anymore. So you as a business owner and a manager, you have got to have to change your management style to suit the current environment. We're not going back to the office ever. The best you can hope for is a hybrid work method so that when you need them in the office to meet with a client um, and remote employees may choose to come in from time to time just just to have that socialization, to, to talk to people and, and to see how things are going in the industry that they feel like they might have missed out on. Um, they may choose to do that. But the manager has to make sure that they have a list of their direct reports and they're following up on them. That's their job. Their job is to manage the workers. Um, and that's what they get paid for. So I feel like a lot of the managers got kind of lazy in the you know in pre-internet because that was the way we'd always done things. And they've never learned how to manage remote teams in the current environment where everybody's working from home. And again, I don't think that's going to change. I think more and more younger people are gonna be demanding at least a hybrid method where they can work from home because they don't wanna get stuck in very, very expensive cities. Um, I'm, I'm a city girl, I love cities, but they don't want to get stuck having to live in the most expensive cities in the world when they can live in a smaller city, get all of the amenities and have a lower cost of living and they can actually live on their own. Um, so there's a lot that's changing and I think it's changing for the better. Um, certainly for the work environment, um, if you want women to stay in the workforce, keep in mind that they are going to want to work from home at least when their kids are little. As the kids grow up and get older and they're in school, the women may choose to come back into the office part-time. But if you want full-time workers and you want them to be women and you think the woman a woman can do a good job, um, you're going to have to, have to, start being way more flexible with, with hours, with time, with punctuality, and with location. So that is my rant. <laughs> for the day um again if you enjoyed this show please like share and subscribe um i'm looking forward to hearing from you uh, if you have a subject for an upcoming podcast or show please comment below i do check the comments um and i will talk to you again soon